Hey guys, um, or friends, uh, let's say friends. Okay, second part of the bicep uh, tutorial. I uh, Today I want to, um, you know, go further with our bicep. Last time we deployed um, a resource group um, using the target scope subscription. And today I'm going to show you uh, how to deploy a storage account. And for this, we just step in. I just have my source code and you will find the source code on my GitHub, which will be linked uh, down below in the subscription, in the description. And let's uh, start over with the main, main bicep. So as I told you, today we're gonna deploy a, a real resource, which means um, it has to live inside of a resource group. And um, we're gonna do it by defining our target scope to be resource group. So that's the first step. So now <clears throat> the cool thing, let's just start simple. Simple with this is we just can say, hey, I need a resource like we did last time. Give it a name, a variable name. Let's say a storage account. We can give it any name. And this should be, um, this should be, uh, oh no, not equals. Uh, here it is. And now we search for storage accounts and uh, this should be the right thing in the last uh, available version. And now let's use the macro for required properties, which shows already what we need to provide at the bare minimum. Let's start with that. So the name should be the name of the storage account. So I know that storage accounts for some weird reason, which I don't know, and I think it's kind of lame, but that's just a side note. They uh, are um, not allowed to have uh, white spaces, which is normal. Um, no special characters and they are limited to, I don't know exactly, 15 characters, something like that. So we have to deal with this. What I do all the time is STO for a prefix. I do it this way. Then DD is for my company, which is DevDeer. And then I make a coding freaks or let's say CF demo. Okay, location will be, and you could write here West Europe or something like that, but you should not because um, I uh, suggest to use a function which is the resource group function. This function will return um, a reference to the resource group which we are deploying to. And now let's take, take the location of this resource group to be the location of our storage account, which uh, I think is a good advice. Then we need to define an SQ or SKU or stop, stop keeping unit. In other words, <clears throat> how much do we want to pay for this? And um, <clears throat> what, this depends here on two things. First, um, the storage type, which is standard or premium, and then the redundancy, which is premium LRS, which will mean premium storage with local redundant storage um, redundancy, local redundancy, zone redundant, global uh, global zone, uh, read access global, uh, whatever. Uh, so. You have to define what you take. I always take premium accounts because of the performance they get. And then I take a local uh, redundancy, which uh, is enough for me. And then the kind can be one of five uh, things. You should not use the old storage here, which is the V1, if you will. Um, I'm um, most of the time you using storage V2, which means in uh, account of this type, I can put blob containers, tables, files, which is SMB storage and queues, I can all put it in. On the other side, if I just want to store blobs, I could say blob storage, and this means it's only blob storage. Okay, so I, I will head over to the V2 and let's keep it this way. So that's it. Now with this in place, I should be able, if I'm on the correct, um, on the correct uh, context. Let's see if I am. Get AZ context. And I'm on my test subscription, which is good. And now I can say deploy PS1, which is 
again let me let me just uh, make it a little bit nicer for you using the back ticks in PowerShell to go multi-line. So that's what I do. Now, if I go over and try to do this, it will not happen because what I assume here is that the resource group already exists, um, but I haven't defined any. So in the last time I created, <laughs> Sorry, I created a resource group for this. Let me see if this is still present. Um, let's go to the Azure portal, resource groups, go to my DevDeer test subscription and see what's going on. And the sample test is uh, not here. So what I will do now is, first of all, in my script, um, I want to create new AZ group, resource group with the name rg uh, what is it rg uh, sample test or whatever and the location of uh, west europe so let's do this and then if this exists i want to go here and say take the resource group resource group is this ah you see i have the wrong deployment i have to take the resource group deployment resource group name is rg sample test which is not the best script i could come up with but two things are important last time we used the new az deployment but this time we have to use another um, commandlet which is resource group deployment which has more options because we are deploying to an a resource group so um, that should work no parameters needed but still i should be able um, to put them in so and now uh, with that let's try to deploy ps1 um, no parameters needed let's see what happens oh by the way he will fail um, because uh, I will need to give him tags. I think that way uh, I can remember. Was it this? Oh man, I'm lost again. Okay, new AZ group purpose test. It's an array. That's not the best thing to do it. <laughs> Let's Google this uh, with tags. Uh, let's uh, dash tag. Ah, you see, equals. And this is a curly brace, which means a dictionary. That's it, I think. So again, let's use backticks to make it clear what we are going to do. And now let's do it. Let's see what happens. He created the resource group. The first line succeeded and then we get an error. Location is unclear. Let's leave it away because it's not needed. Let's now I can do it again. You see, because this is already created. So that is what I mean with not the best script I made. Let's see what happens. Bicep is uh, running. See it here, which means he is creating our ARM template out of our bicep fi file. Should be the case right now. Let's wait. And let's see what happens. Let's refresh this and here's our sample test. One succeeded. Deploy succeeded. Is that true? He's already done. Well, that's that would be pretty fast. Refresh. He says he's okay. We have to wait here. Yeah, there it is. We have a storage account. So 
<clears throat> that's basically it. So we created uh, the resource group, which is not the best way again to do it. I, I'll show you better ways uh, later on. And now we have this uh, new deployment, which is called deploy, which uh, we can see here. This is the deployment name with the details and it's uh, created the storage account for us. So not bad, but um, some things are pretty important here. First of all, see this mode incremental. It means if we just redeploy this or redo our deployment, it will incrementally, as I showed you with the what if command last time, it will incrementally add or sometimes um, uh, delete options from my storage account. So I can go over and over again just by hitting the deploy. So for instance, what, what I can do, I think I could not change the kind after deploying it, but um, I think I could change the, um, the SKU. I don't know if you can change those, but we did not that much though. So, so we have a storage account, okay, but here's a lot of things we could do um, in order to make this thing better. Let's say, for instance, what is going on? Security, let us search. No, security is not the best thing. Let us search for something we could, um, we could uh, put in. For instance, for instance, what could we do next? Um, let me see, uh, where is this thing? Um, there is some option to say, what is the minimum TLS? So where is this hiding? Let me uh, see this. Encryption? No, blobs and files only. This is not configuration maybe. And here is secure transfer, public blob is enabled. Well, and here's the minimum TLS version. So don't switch it here. Let's go over and say, well, you know what? I want to define some properties. And one of them is the minimum TLS version, which I send now or set now to TLS 1.2, which means the newest one. So I just changed it or added or edited it in the uh, main bicep. And now just deploy again. Just hit the deploy and let's see what happens. Let's wait a little bit. And I think, yeah, that succeeded. So let's go leave the blade, go to the blade again and nothing happens. Refresh and now it happened. TLS version 1.2. So he changed it. Okay, cool. Uh, that's nice because whenever I redeploy one storage account, um, it will already have TLS 1.2 set. So what else could we do? Um, so what's about the access tier? You have two options, cool and hot, which also um, is um, telling you something about the pricing. So currently the access tier is hot. So what when I change it to cool, which makes it uh, much cheaper, the, the storage, but slower too, by the way. So again, we wait just to show you how this works. Okay, cool. Refresh this and he switched. Cool. That's it. So instead of using the portal and clicking it to, together every time over and over again, you define a storage account, you could use now the bicep template to do this stuff. So not bad. But now if this will become my template for future storage accounts, which is the ultimate goal. Okay. The ultimate goal is that you have the definition of all your storage accounts in this file. That is not a good idea because first of all, not every storage account can have this name. That's not um, going. So what you do now is you define a parameter, a param, which is the uh, name, account name. Um, and this will be a string. So because we don't give it the default value, it's a mandatory parameter. Okay. So the user has to define it. If we are uh, good people, we can say the name of the account without any prefixes, because in my company, this script, this template is just for my company. It's not for everybody. 
So what I could do here is to say, well, you know what? All this first part, this is already uh, my standard. Now it comes to governance where we uh, say one part of governance is naming conventions. Now you can use the templates to um, put in your naming conventions and you could do it by a string concatenation and telling account name. Well, that's not a good idea in, in this area. So <clears throat> if we take a look in the naming conventions, let, let's go over and say Azure naming conventions. So, and I think um, there is, um, where is it? Is it this one? Uh, and is it telling me something about, I'm already in cloud adoption framework. That's pretty cool. Um, let us see, there was a uh, naming conventions storage account. So this is this. And now we have containers. Where is storage? Storage. Microsoft Storage, storage account. <laughs> Those are prefixes. Okay. Microsoft Storage account. And I thought there would be some naming and tagging. I thought there will be uh, some hints. So let's assume that 15 characters is the maximum. Now, what I, for a storage account, one, two, three, four, five, it's five characters here. So 10 would be the maximum, which would be allowed at this parameter, 10 characters, not more. And plus, we already know that a storage account name can't contain any dashes or whatever. So what I could do is now, um, I could define a variable, variable called a cleared account name um, equals account name. And then we can have a, a method, which is the replace method, which uh, can be used for string replacement. And this is telling me what are you searching for? And I'm telling him this, for instance. So this is the first uh, thing I could do, but you know, <clears throat> it's not a regular expression replacement. It's just replacing dashes or whatever. So that makes no sense uh, here because I would have to replace everything, which is a special character. Okay. So that's not, but just to show you the, the idea, account name, um, without any prefixes and special characters or white spaces. So now that we're telling this to um, our caller, he, uh, we are not to blame here. So, but if we do this, what the caller does not know is what the final name of the storage account will be because he is not supposed to know the prefix. So what we do now is that we define a so-called output. So here's a macro, uses macro, and he says, okay, this is a variable name, this is a variable uh, so now comes the usage of variables. We just tell him that take the storage account, take <coughs> uh, from the storage account the name and just put it into the output. So before we can now uh, use this, we now have to face the fact that we have a parameter now which is mandatory. And um, in order to pass it in, we have to take again our parameters file, um, which now is uh, parameters. And now let me take a look um, how this is going to be done. And uh, now we can go ahead and call it, what was it? storage account name, account name. An account name uh, would have the value, what is going on? And how was our account name? It was RG sample test incremental. We don't know it from here. That's the thing. CF demo. So CF demo. And this now 
should lead to exactly the same deployment. If I go and hit deploy again, let's see if he still deploys it. <clears throat> okay, he's saying he's deploying it and uh, now something interesting happens. First of all, in this output, the parameter is um, given to us, which is good because we just take a look at the output later, for instance, in the build process, we can check with which parameters was, was this called. And now our outputs hit in. This is the line here at the bottom. And this tells us exactly uh, the value of the resulting account name. So that parameter value was um, um, converted to the storage account value. So and now if um, the other parameters, it, uh, with the other parameters, it, it is exactly the same. So let's assume that your company has different SKUs supported. SKU, which is again a string. Um, but now you can say, you know what? My default value should be premium LRS. And now you can do the description, which is uh, the SKU for the storage account. Okay, be nice and uh, tell it to everybody. And now, what we are doing, not max length, but allowed. Allowed is an array. And <coughs> uh, now, because this is a string, we have it to, we, we must give him the parameters which are allowed. And he checks all the time, as you can see. So now, premium LS, and let's say we want support standard GIS tools. So we simply copy out the values here, uh, which we want to support. And now we just say the SKU is the SKU. So again, we're using a parameter inside of our script. And basically the tip here is um, most of the things which are in single brackets inside of the resource should somehow be um, parameterized in the most cases. In stuff like these scenarios in minimum TLS version, you could argue, well, you know what, this is... Um, my uh, compliance says uh, I want to have the latest TLS version, so it's not parameterized. I can't get a storage account which is lower than TLS 1.2, but the access tier should be something which is parameterized. Access tier equals uh, hot is the default, let's say, and again, description. Um, the access tier for the account. And you could do better than that, of course. And a lot are hot and cool. Um, I don't care that much about the, uh, the order of things here, but you certainly could. So now here use the access tier and that's it. Uh, so, and now if we deploy again without hitting our parameters, again, he says, cannot find path. That's cool because it doesn't exist. What? Name deploy. That is strange. Uh, dum, 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 dum. Main JSON because it does not. Ah, you see here, there's something weird. You could not compile this because I forgot the type. That should do the job. As you noticed, you don't see much output here during the deployment, which could be kind of stressing you out because you don't know what's going on. So now we get uh, those three parameters which are uh, in. So even if we don't specify the parameters inside of the parameters file, he will output the parameters which were used. Um, those are here, this is the default parameter values so that we know uh, with, with, with which parameters this deployment uh, occurred. So back to the thing with the missing output here. Mm, there is an option. Let me just um, see what is going on. Let me maybe put this into a browser to be sure. And I just have to look for the option. And there is uh, some option. Let me see. Query string, skip pre what if row back common parameters default proceed of no change um, 
Oh no, I, I know what it was. It was just verbose, like the default. Yeah, let's use verbose. I think that's it. Let us check this again and clear this. It's just verbose, I think. Yeah, now you can see that he's giving out the um, verbose informations, checking deployment status, and you see, okay, now, now it's going on. And um, what's... Um, Let's let's take a look at verbosity later if when we access more. So uh, this example of a storage account is pretty good to explain another thing which is pretty important. And with this with this I will conclude the to this today's tutorial, because the storage account by itself doesn't give you anything. Um, what this is doing is it's just an account for things you could have. Um, um, provided by this, for instance, uh, containers or whatever. So now currently we don't have any container. Um, so that's bad. Let's go and change this. Um, in order to do this, you can't, you, you will not find a property here inside of the storage account itself to provide a new container. And um, this is because the account is just a holder for those containers and if you want to for queues and stuff like that. So you need to deploy another resource. Uh, let's call it first container. And now in the storage account, you have inside of blob services containers. So this is a blob service container. So let's use this guy uh, in the latest version two, and this equals to require properties, please. And first of all, he needs a name. And this is kind of complicated now, because what we see here is, let me get rid of the shell. You can't deploy a container without having a storage account. So this dependency must be, you know, represented here in the script. And you use it with the depends on, which is an array. And you can tell the later the arm to, to uh, that the first container should be only should only be deployed if and after the storage account is deployed. So you just tell it in Bicep this way. So storage account is a dependency. Now, the name of a container uh, is has to be concatenated in a certain way because it is a child resource of the storage account. And uh, you will see this um, in other places too, if you have child resources. And the thing here is you need to build the string. So what you need is the storage account name followed by a slash, then the word default, which is documented by the way, um, and then the name of your storage account, uh, of your container. So let's say um, we will give it as a parameter to the script, uh, container, blob container, name as a string and uh, you will need to define it. So account name and blob container name and let's say we want to allow a max name. I can, I think they can be bigger. Uh, okay, description name of the blob container to deploy. So now we can say here Take this parameter, which we have at the top, of container name, and this all together builds the string for the container name. It's a path, if you will. So depends on this guy, and then this has properties too. Um, and for instance, you could say, which is pretty important, public access non, which is a private container. This is the most important option here. Let us leave it this way. So uh, now that we have this, let's try uh, this out by putting in the parameter, uh, which is block container name. Let's see, I have another parameter block container name, which should have the value um, of first container, whatever. And with that, let's deploy. And let's see what happens. Again, verbosity, and now verbosity is pretty important here because 
what you see right now is that is not happening <laughs> okay that's another um, invalid characters so uh, invalid characters really let me see what I did wrong block container name um, default slash that should be okay storage account name is correct and this is first container and this first container let me see if I'm just doing this I'm not sure what's going on here it should work And now it succeeded. So the thing I suspected it to be was the uh, capital character there. I think it's not a lot. I don't know why. Um, but it's uh, it's a good point here. So in order not, uh, not to run in this thing again, what we could do is we could do a variable var cleared container name equals uh, to lower of container name. Uh, block container name. So and then we use this one instead of the other. So let's go back and let's say first container and now maybe we get two containers because we are incremental but we can already have a look at the containers and here you see first and first yeah that's exactly what I so thought will happen because we have incremental updates and the new one is not the same and now uh, let me maybe delete um, both containers. Delete containers. Delete. Yeah. So now just redeploy. And <coughs> remember, if this happens, we have the parameter is first container big C. And now what happens is that if it runs through, and it did, we have to wait. Come on, refresh yourself, please. Okay, failed, 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 failed. Oh, you know why? Uh, you know why? Because he, the delete is not yet done. Okay, let's call it my container. Again. Because uh, it's not always like, you know, logical. Anyway, let's go ahead. And I did the same errors every time. I ignored the provisioning state. Now it succeeded. And now we should see my container with a lower C, which means our rule kicked in. So that's nice. But even nicer would be if we, if this is a script we can reuse, let's imagine we have several containers. And let's, let's imagine we want to create a blob storage account, but um, we want to create it with more than one container so how do we do this okay let me see what you do is um, block container names as an array not a string so now you have several container names one um, or more so, uh, so now cleared container names gets a little bit messy let me see I think I just Put this out and what we could do now is we could make this a container and now it is for container in uh, blob containers is this correct to be honest i don't know exactly in blob container names for container name in so what I want to do is a for loop here so and I want to deploy a lot of them and let me see how this is done actually so let's go to the bicep I forgot the um, for loop so you could do this you can do this for in for in uh, Bup, 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 bup. Bar string array is for i in range item count item oh that's good so what we could do is first of all var 
cleaned uh, container names is for uh, for each. I will a for each loop. Uh, for in, for i in range, 0 to a, uh, I don't want this, array element, for name and storage name, for uh, x, n, let's see, what is it, uh, it is block container names, it is to lower name, x, that correct that should be clean container names okay now I have the same as before now I have a new array which is projected from the old one okay and now for container in and I want to do a deployment subnets for subnet in subnets yeah I know that but if I want to have multiple uh, containers how should I do this I think I have to do the colon somehow for name in clean he's not or is it this one let's think about it oh no oh no it has to be an array it has to be an array yeah. equals this and then the complete thing is an array for name in c that should be uh, in for container in C. I think I'm getting nearer right now. I have curly brackets. I have this one expected at this. For oh, I see, I see. It is, ah, it's getting better, it's getting better. Um, Let's give it a real good name for name in. Use this name here. And now it's getting better. Now the indention happens. So what is happening here is um, it's the, the syntax. I came um, a little bit confused, um, became confused with the syntax. So now you just say it's an array of resources, which ends here. And the array should be built up by a for loop. So that what happened. And for each of the instances in container names, you get this. And you could even say, and I'm I don't know if this gets better if uh, not empty cleaned container names. Is this still ha happening? No, <laughs> I I don't know. I I have to say, you know what? Just deploy. But but this is another circumstance. Okay, let's see. If I'm now have clean container names. Now what I need to be uh, is block container names, and the value must be an array. Uh, is it this way? I think first second okay let's try it out guys it was a little bit confusing I know uh, just deploy it and see if we have first and second container maybe we get an error because we already have first or second no we don't have any containers let's watch it I hope we get it succeeded and we have first and second and they are both private that's good Okay, now um, just to recap all this stuff, let me get rid of some of my <laughs> sessions here. So wh what did I do here? First of all, I told him, you know, the blob container names are an array of names. Then the next thing was to clean every element of the array and put it into a new array with clean container names, which just means they are lowered. 
And then the last thing, which I came a little bit syntactically wrong, is to build up an array of deployments. So we don't have one deployment, maybe containers is a better name for this. And even better would be blob containers uh, now. And then we say each of those should be, uh, would be of type uh, blob service container, but the amount of deployments depends on the elements in the clean container names. And now every item of this gets, it's like a lambda, if you will. Uh, so now what we could do is we could output um, container containers as a number, which is uh, the length of clean container names for instance, or oh, deployed containers. Okay, cool. Um, let's try this out again, a new terminal, and deploy again and see if the output works. And this is already, let's say decent. Decent in terms of it's usable, it's, it's, it's totally cool. So now we have two containers deployed, that's it. And the, it will deploy them all over again. You see first and second here. The last thing which could be interesting is because now the, the, the reason why I'm showing this is now that you have private containers, it could be pretty important for you to have this private, uh, this um, primary key here. So in order to retrieve this, this is not so easy. And I will try this right now because um, this is kind of strange. So what we could do is we could say primary key is a string and there is a um, method, there's a function um, which is called list keys, list keys. And if you type it in, uh, you, you, it's, it's kind of strange. If you just type list keys, you don't get IntelliSense. But as soon as you typed it and hit the uh, brace, he knows it is a as sort of a list function. Okay, and what he needs now from us is first of all resource name or identifier to be sure we just give him from storage account the ID, which is the identifier. Then he needs an API version, which we give him just this one, which we used already. And then I think it is a keys and you have to know it. And then the first one, let's see if this if this is correct, okay? So this should output the first key out of the keys collection um, returned by the keys function. So let's see if this works. And I'll tell you something about it then, if it works. I didn't check it. Um, let's see, it should be pretty, oh, you see it's not. The template output primary key is not valid. Template output JToken type is not valid expected string actual is object oh it is it is an object okay let's see what we know about this object if it works maybe it's dot value or something it's always the same you see uh, value told you dot value and now it's a string again and now okay problem with this is, of course, this is pretty heavy because you now um, return information about a very, very important value, which is the secret key, the primary key, which can be used to access the storage account fully, if you know the connection string. And, um, you know, there are other types, I think, list connection strings or something like that i don't know but anyways sometimes you don't uh, come uh, you come to the point where you need to know this thing um, inside of your automation and i just showed you how to make it be careful with this um, because you can you can expose um, pretty important information but it's good to know that it's possible to do this and you should be think about all this stuff. So um, this will be part of the source code I share. 
Um, we uh, the next time in the next part we will go over some uh, more information. Um, for instance, we will show uh, some samples of uh, so-called modules, which are pretty important to build a professionalized version of all this because currently we are building in one file and now we got the problem here with the resource group, which is pretty bad. You should do it better. You could do it better with PowerShell too. Just check in the first version which resource group and then uh, if it exists and then and then deploy it if not. But there is an even better way to do it using uh, the stuff from the last time and today's stuff and then we can combine them. So we will go over that using modules um, and uh, we will see some more stuff. One thing maybe is important today I want to I, I wanna show you that you can have commands here in any place um, and you can tell him for instance uh, we want to have this set to TLS 1.2 in any uh, account. Whatever. You can have commands. It's pretty important too. So uh, I think it's a good point to leave you with this and I hope you had fun and see you next time. Bye.